Welcome. Today is a gentle class. I uh, will be using uh, the wall quite a bit today. However, I can't really think of anything that absolutely you would be totally lost without a wall. <laughs> okay, so if you don't have easy access to a wall, you can get pretty creative. Uh, you can use chair, windowsill, a lot of the stuff you can do without a wall if you happen to not have one or just don't want to use one for, for many of the things. So um, so when we get to those points, you know, I'll try and, and offer up some other options in case, um, in case a wall is not easily available to you. But if you have one and you want to be near it, and uh, that, that's fine, just wanted to let you know. Again, all of the other props are also optional. Um, there will be options for sitting on your heels, so if something to help with your knees um, for that would be nice, or for sitting purposes, you might have a chair, um, or you might have some pillows, or whatever kind of situation helps you sit. Uh, and then I have blocks just for one thing at the beginning that you may or may not need them for. So again, it's just, you know, all the props are, <laughs> if they help you, and if you happen to have them, grab some. And um, then find yourself a seat. It could be on the ground, it could be in a chair. You could have your eyes open or closed, but allow yourself to just choose. Tune your attention into your breath. Begin your practice there. I love that no matter what we're doing, if we're practicing asana, if we're practicing meditation, if we're uh, not on our mats and we're walking around, running, working, whatever it is, our breath is this common thread that we can always access. So for me, that's that paying attention to my breath is, a, is how I bring myself into practice. If you do nothing else in this, you know, half an hour, if you do nothing else besides sit here and breathe or lie down and breathe, you've done enough. On your next exhale, you can lower your chin. Let's take a breath right here. And roll your head back up through center. We're gonna take our feet wide like this. You can stay sitting on your prop or if, uh, if you have one, or you can come off of it. <laughs> and you can bring your hands back behind you or come down to your elbows and drop both knees over to the right. So wide feet so that we end up in a windshield wiper kind of shape. And then stretch out through your knee. And if it bothers your knee to drop down on the inside, just don't bring it as far. Bring it just as far as you can with it feeling okay. And then go to the other side. Good. Knees back to the right. And this time, as you take your knees to the right, from your belly button up, twist to the left. So knees to the right, twist you to the left. And come back through center, switch sides, take your knees to the left, and then from your belly button up, twist you to the right. Come back to center, take both knees to the right. Now this time, bring your left arm around and start to reach it away from your legs. And so take a few breaths here. So we're making space here on especially this left side. So as you inhale, breathe into your left side, chest, belly, ribs. 
And as you exhale, see if you can turn your belly button up now down toward the ground and crawl your arm more forward. Maybe one more round like that. Release, come back through center, second side, take both knees to the left, bring your right arm around and crawl it out. And then when you breathe in, I'm coming down to my left forearm for this one, um, so you can do that or you can stay on your hand. When you breathe in, now breathe into the right side of your body. And then as you exhale, turn from your belly button up toward the ground as you crawl your right hand forward. One or two more breaths like that. And release, come back through center. And now cross at your ankles and find hands and knees. And so for here, um, you initially you can be at the top of your mat. And uh, this is where if you're going to use blocks, they'll come in handy. <laughs> okay, but I'll show you what we're gonna do. So you'll take your right knee and cross it behind your left. So you sort of make this little Twizzler shape with your leg and then pull your left leg out, take it behind you and crawl your left leg back. So we're essentially just gonna be walking back. And if this is really tight for you, using blocks will just give you more space. So you'll take your right leg, swing it around, walk it back, take your left leg, swing it around, walk it back so you can see how I just give myself more space with some blocks. And then once you get to the back of your mat, you go forward. <laughs> Just keep going. And then go backwards. We'll do one more round. Give our hips some things to think about here. <laughs> Maybe a little brain exercise. The next time you get toward the top of your mat, when you have your left knee in front of your right, pause there and then start to sit back. So my left knee is actually lifting up off the ground. I'm stretching the top of my left ankle because it's pointing backwards. So it's like I'm doing child's pose, but I don't know about y'all. This is about as much as I got. <laughs> and then release, switch sides. Take your right knee in front now and do the same thing on the second side. Just sit back, notice what you notice. You might feel a lot of sensation on the down knee. You might feel a lot of sensation in the top of your right ankle. You might feel some stuff in your calves and your hips. Really anywhere. And then release that. Curl your toes under. From here, you can lift your hips and walk your hands back or find any other way that you like to make your way up to standing. I'm gonna go forward bend and then look forward and come up. And then release hands down. So from here, you may go ahead and find uh, space at the wall. You may or may not actually need the wall for this. Everyone's gonna be a little bit different, depends on your balance. But um, if you are, however you're going to be doing it, we're gonna be swinging. And so I'm gonna stand with my left hand to the wall and swing my right leg. And the idea here is, and you could have your hand on a chair on the back of a couch, or you can do swingy arms too. <laughs> okay. You know, if your balance is gonna let you do that sort of thing. And so I don't know about you, but my toes want to turn out when my leg goes back. So I'm gonna try and keep my toes pointing straight ahead and just be as free as I can in my swing from the hip. Breathe. And then release, do your second side.
If I'm honest, I also do this in the middle of my work day, standing beside my desk. Check that you're breathing as you go. Okay, and now release that. From this one, you can either, again, be away from the wall or you might actually turn and face the wall. You just wanna have some space in front of you because the swing is now side to side. And for this one, I don't try and keep my toes pointing straight ahead necessarily. I, I guess I do a little bit when I take my arm, uh, my leg out to the side, but kind of play with that. <laughs> and so you could have, you could actually turn and face your, whatever you're using for your hands, or you could be free with your balance and see how it goes. <laughs> I don't know why, but my arms want to do this for this one, <laughs> which I feel is very silly, but kind of fun. Okay, second side. <laughs> I definitely have one side that uh, feels different from the other on this one. There you go. If you haven't been awkward yet today, here's your moment. <laughs> okay, release. Nice. From here. For this next bit, um, if, again, if you have a wall, I'm actually gonna bring my mat up to the wall because I'm gonna lean against my wall like this. So of course, if you're, um, if you're using a, a chair, you don't wanna lean into that. <laughs> okay. uh, if you have carpet, you may or may not need your, your mat. Um, and if you don't have a wall, then my suggestion is to hold on to something and you do what you can from standing. We're gonna do toe lifts, and the idea with our toe lifts today is to really like lift your kneecaps and keep your knees really straight and tight. So if you're just holding on to something, you'll do it standing, and you'll go lift and lower like this. But if you lean against something, you could lean with barely any angle, or you could lean with quite a bit of angle, and what you might notice is when you dig your heels down, straighten your knees and pull your toes up towards you, the more angle you get, um, the more challenging it is, the more resistance you get essentially. So spread your toes, really firm the tops of your thighs. And if your heels are sensitive, you can put more cushioning under them. Actually, I really like to do this uh, when I have my shoes on. A lot of times I'll do it when I am wearing my tennis shoes right before I'm gonna go out for a walk or something. Do some little toe lifts. You might notice that at first you were like, this is easy, why are we doing it? Um, maybe not, but if you were thinking that and you're no longer thinking that, me too. <laughs> This one sneaks up on me. Suddenly, my feet feel very heavy. <laughs> Maybe do one or two more, or if you're done, you're done, you know? You can only do what you can do. <laughs> okay, and release that, and then stand back up for a moment. Maybe you kind of shake your ankles out for a sec here. Got a lot of nice, uh, things for our feet and ankles today in class. Apparently that's what I was thinking about because that's what we're doing. So this next one, um, you can do leaning against the wall. You could do it sitting in a chair um, as well. Or you can just do it totally freestanding uh, as well. So for this one, I'm going to uh, start with bent knees. Now I can go a little bit of knee bend or like a moderate chair sit and my feet here at first are I don't know shoulder a little wider than shoulder distance apart so I'm sitting kind of rudely in my chair you know taking up lots of space next to me <laughs> yeah and then from here 
push into the ball mounds of your feet, like right at the base of your big toe, and then push your big toes into the ground and lift your heels. You wanna see how high can you lift your heels and come back down. So do a couple rounds like that. I see a couple of rounds. I'm gonna do maybe like five or so like this. We're gonna do more. So um, what, we're, what I wanna to start to notice is now, if you take your heels in and do the same thing, so my toes are now pointing out, my heels are pointing in. And again, I'm trying to do some heel lifts. You can see what that's like. Good. and then take your heels back to where now you're in a straight line and straighten your knees and then raise your heels again here. Different angle. <laughs> so for me, this is like a really nice combination of um, working on kind of active mobility in my feet and ankles and um, also waking up my calves in different positions. Good, and then after I've done a few right there, I'm gonna turn my heels in, my toes out, and try a couple heel lifts there. <laughs> I find it uh, kind of difficult to push my big toes down here, but I'm doing my best. I also find it difficult to lift my heels here, but there we go. Good, and then release that. Now, um, we have one more chance here to sink down. So you can try, uh, you can go feet closer together, which will be like this. Um, and you can do that small squat again, or you can sit quite a lot lower to where you're actually coming down into a pretty low sit. It very much depends on how much you can tolerate in this position. And we go heels up, heels down. This might be a good moment to sit in a chair. <laughs> Lovely. And then release, come on back up. Hopefully you chose wisely on that one and spin around. So now after we did that, we're gonna give ourselves a little moment to kind of stretch that out. So you can stand again near a wall, a chair, a windowsill, whatever you've got. And take your right foot back and your left foot forward toward the wall. And so the idea with this one is to actually make your right foot go straight back behind you. Like look at it and notice if your foot's angling and actually try to make your foot straight for this particular one. And so you wanna bring your heel close enough in where you can get your heel down to the ground and then straight knee bend into your front knee. That's kind of like a little warrior one but the idea is to straighten your back knee and then push through the big toe mound, the ball of your back foot, even though your heel is still down. Now see if you can bend your back knee a tiny, tiny bit. Mine doesn't bend very much because my ankle mobility is pretty much maxed out there personally. And release, second side. Bring your left foot back, bring your right foot forward, and then check. Make sure that your left foot actually is kind of pointed straight, not turned. And then bend into your right knee, but keep your left knee really straight. Push into the ball mound of your left foot and into your big toe. Breathe. And then bend your back knee to whatever degree you can. That might be barely any, like me. I think pretty much all of y'all have more bend in your back knee than me. <laughs> at this moment. Nice job. 
Good, release. Bring your right foot back. Now this time when you bring your left foot forward, if you have um, a wall or some sort of surface that you can put your toes up on, put your toes up. If you don't, don't worry about it. Keep your toes down and do the similar thing. So whatever you're doing, push into the ball mound now of your front foot, focus there and press into the big toe of your front foot. And if you're on a wall, you can walk your hands up the wall so you have space to lean forward. You can walk your hands forward on whatever surface you're using and lean forward. And stick your butt back, breathe. Push into the ball of your front foot. And then back out of that a little bit. Keep your foot where it is, but now turn your foot out to the left. So turn it out to the side, whether your foot's on the ground or on the wall, you can kind of turn it out. Push into the ball of your foot and do the same thing again. Lean forward again and just notice how it feels this time. Release. Bring your left foot back and your right foot forward. You can either bring your toes up onto the wall or just bring your foot forward on the ground. Whatever you're doing, push into the ball mound of your right foot, push into the big toe and lean forward. Breathe. And if you feel like you need more sensation, but your face is smushing the wall, you can always walk your back foot back more. That, to me, that's how I get more lean forward. That might've been helpful on the first side, but. And then come out a little bit, then turn your toes out to the right. Push into the ball of your foot, the big toe, and lean forward again. Breathe. And then release. Come out of that. Take both of your feet back and then do a wall dog where you're pushing into the wall, you're holding the back of your couch, you're holding onto your windowsill, stick your butt back and lift your armpits up away from the ground as you stretch out through your arms and stretch your hips back. Your knees could be bent so that you can get more length in your spine. Like if you bend your knees and stick your butt back, notice how that feels. And then if you can maintain that and straighten your knees, do so, but I'd rather you have long spine than straight knees. And release, come up through center. Okay, from here, um, this one you can do um, using the wall, using um, something firm like a couch back or a windowsill or you might do this from the ground, from hands and knees, um, or from a kneeling plank. So essentially what we'll do is you can have your hands, and your hands can be um, fingertips or knuckles or palms flat. It just depends on how your wrists are. You can be um, pretty vertical here, or you can be walked out a little bit. So the first thing that we're going to go for is essentially um, a like chaturanga prep. So chaturanga is when you go from plank to elbows kind of by your sides and it's like a tricep push-up position and then plank. And so when we take that to the wall, what I like to do here, the, the trick with this pose is that your shoulders essentially 
have to go past your wrist because when you end up in chaturanga, your hands end up, if I'm standing, lower than my shoulders. If I'm on the ground, right, my shoulders are forward of my wrists in that pose. And so when I'm on the wall, I place my hands, and again, if I'm leaning back, I've got to place my hands maybe a little bit lower. Um, but I'm going to place my hands, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to inhale and come up onto my toes so that when I bend my elbows toward my ribs, I have a little bit of that chaturanga kind of feel. So I'm going to go toes, elbows toward my ribs. I'm going to squeeze my shoulders toward one another and then push back away, heels down. You are completely welcome to do this on the ground. If you're doing it, say, on a windowsill um, or the back of a couch, it would be toes, elbow bend, up and back, right? If you're doing it from the ground, it's going to be lean forward, elbow bend to whatever degree you can get back up from, and then back. Okie dokie. Take your pick. Here we go. Find your hand position and then go up onto your toes. Bend your elbows back by your ribs and then pause. Grip the wall, the ground, the windowsill and squeeze your shoulder blades back toward one another. Then push away and heels down. So make it easy enough where you could pause at the bottom of it. Lift up onto your toes, bend your elbows back by your ribs, even if you bend just an inch. Pause, grip whatever you're on, shoulder squeeze and then push away and down. Do a few more like this. You can, I also like to think about when I come up onto my toes, I go ahead and grip, and then I imagine that I'm gonna pull the wall towards me, and that's what pulls me down. Then push the wall away from me, and then come back down. So if you imagine that you grip and pull the wall towards you, that'll automatically engage the shoulder blades in the back. Breathe as you go, inhale as you come up to your toes, exhale as you bend, inhale as you straighten, and then exhale down. Do a couple more like this. and then release. You can gently shake your hands out. Nothing too intense. Be nice to your wrists, okay? And then find yourself kind of at the um, back of your mat. Take your feet wide, like mat distance apart, and come down toward the ground. So again, um, let's go Bend your knees to where you can stick your butt up in the air and get a long spine. If you want blocks under your hands or you want to be like near your windowsill and hold on to you know, the windowsill, the back of a chair or something, this is a good place to do that. And start to crawl your hands forward if you've still got some space to go. Yeah. So it's like down dog, but all the weight's in your feet. You might stay right here and breathe, or you might start to crawl your hands forward and shift your hips forward, but I'm still trying to keep that same butt in the air, length in my spine, so I lift my heels instead of bending my back, like rounding my back. And then if you walk out far enough, you're in downward facing dog. <laughs> If you can keep your back nice and long and straighten your knees, feel free to do that. If you can keep your back long and lower your heels, feel free to do that. And the next place we're coming is to the ground so you can lower your knees down. And then come onto your belly. From your belly, roll to your side. Um, you can roll to either side. I'll try and use top bottom arm cues rather than <laughs> right and left. Roll to where you can see. And from here, uh, I'm going to stack my palms. Bend your knees here a little bit. 
And we're just going to go for some nice big arm circles, but try and include our spine and shoulder blades. So reach your top arm first forward, like it's going to go out past your bottom arm and then sweep it up and overhead. Rotate your whole spine as you sweep the arm back behind you and then come back to center. And so make really big circles, but think about that you're powering those circles from like your right shoulder blade. Now try and connect your breath with this movement. And the next time that your arm opens back behind you, Maybe stay right there. For me, mine's sort of hovering over the ground because I was doing circles. So see if you can actually stretch from the right, uh, the top side of top side of your chest out through your fingertips. Like I said, I'd cue with top and bottom cues, but I haven't done the best job of that. <laughs> but that take that top arm and really reach from your chest out through your fingertips, and then you can put it down on the ground and release, like relax all of your muscle activation and breathe. You can let your hips and legs and spine kind of go wherever it goes. And then come back through center and roll to your other side. So now taking your top arm, reach it forward, like stretch your shoulder blade away from your spine and then start to reach overhead, make a circle, reach it back behind you, circle around and then come back through center. And connect your breath with your movement in some way here. Make the movement center around your shoulder blade. If it's easier for you to think about um, like moving from your armpit, <laughs> I don't know if that's helpful, but that's the back side of your armpit is the outer border of your shoulder blade. So, you know. Pretty close there. And the next time that you have that top arm open and stretching kind of back, you can find the best angle where you're like, oh yeah, that's the angle I need. When you reach that top arm back behind you, from your chest, from the front of your shoulder, from your armpit, stretch toward your fingertips. And then on your next exhale, relax your arm and relax the rest of you. If your arm doesn't go to the ground, that's completely fine. You can even bend your elbow and put your hand on your top rib cage if you need to for softening, or you can just let it kind of hang if that feels good to you, or you can put a prop underneath your arm. At the end of your next exhale, sweep that arm back around and press yourself up. Find sitting here. You might sit on a prop. You might sit on the ground. 
Cross your right shin on top of your left and bring your legs in for cross seated. And so if cross seated on the ground is very much like this, definitely try for a prop. <laughs> you know? Or feel free to lay on your back. I will say the other thing you can do is lie on your back and do like a cross seated knees toward your chest. That's totally fine. What we're gonna go for is a um, forward bend here. So you can bring your hands out in front of you or bring your hands behind you to help you lengthen forward, you know? It just depends on like what actually helps you, what feels good in your hips. Breathe. At first, see if you can stick your butt back and pull your front ribs forward. Inhale. And then as you exhale, if your hands are in front of you, push the ground away from you to kind of tone your low belly and round in your spine a little bit. If your hands are behind you, you can take your low belly back like a little bit of a cat pose and round. You may find if, you're, um, if your hips are tighter, you may say, I don't really need this. This rounding thing doesn't do a lot for me. I'm gonna keep going butt back, chest forward, <laughs> okay? And if you're very, very bendy and butt back, chest forward, it's like very easy for you, then maybe more rounding will be interesting. Release. Bring your legs forward, cross left shin on top of right. Bring your legs in and hands behind you or in front of you. Mainly breathe. You can just stay right where you are, but if you wanna play with this a little bit, you can play with this difference between sticking your butt back and pulling like your low rib cage forward. Almost like a backbended stage of the pose. And then you can play with if the hands are in front of you, you push the ground away to kind of help you take your belly and your rib cage and like hollow them back a little bit. And then you decide, okay, in my body, I naturally tend toward rounding. So I'm actually gonna come back and do more of the butt back, chest forward, or I tend to hang out in flexibility related poses. So I'm gonna do more of the hollow the belly and rib cage and round a little bit. And release. Walk your hands back up. And now from here, we're just gonna sit for a couple minutes. And so uh, you may find what sitting position works for you? That might be up on something. Um, you might prefer to sit on your heels since we were just doing cross-legged with or without something underneath you. You might say, um, I wanna sit in a chair or I don't feel like sitting, I'm gonna lay down. <laughs> You're in your own space, you get to decide these things. And so you just pause. Eyes open or closed. This has been a class where really I've done a lot of moving. So here in this moment, and you find stillness, maybe first in your body by really connecting with the ground. Put your attention on the parts of you that are touching the ground. And see if you can really settle into those parts. Notice if your thoughts are able to 
remain with you, connecting to the ground, maybe noticing your breath move in and out. And if your mind is a little more active, if it's flitting from thought to thought, if it continues to go back to the same thought over and over again, notice that too. And every time you notice it, encourage your mind back to your breath, back to the ground. Knowing that it's the nature of the mind to wander. And just like any muscle, we can build our capacity to tolerate stillness. One more time, notice your breath, your connection with the ground. And gently lengthen your breath. If your eyes are closed, maybe blink them open. Notice the space around you. <sighs> Notice the screen in front of you, maybe. I'm so glad y'all were all here. Thank you so much for joining me for practice today. Om Shanti Shanti Shantihi. Peace, peace, peace.